Have you ever wondered why on your departure board at an airport multiple flight numbers are on a single flight? Have you ever been surprised when you've booked a flight at a four-star or even five-star airline and ended up on a two-star low-cost carrier? Well then, that's co-chairing for you. Luckily, we'll be here to discuss the topic today. Welcome to Globetrotting, your home for aviation analysis. Do subscribe if you're new. Now, last week on the channel, we discussed airline alliances, and very briefly, might I add, we did explore code sharing. The truth is, though, there's much more to the world of code sharing than just a brief 30 second explanation. What's a code share? A code share is a business practice in the aviation industry, wherein at least two airlines share a flight operated by one airline and marketed by all the airlines involved. This practice enables airlines to grow without adding costly planes to their fleet. It's also a way of potentially testing a market before an airline decides to serve a market independently. Code shares run on the computer system run by the airline. The system communicates real-time to determine the available seats in the partner airline's inventory. The code share between two airlines usually comes in two setups. The first is when an airline buys a specified number of seats from the operating airline, while the second is when they have no specific number of seats. Thus, the airlines involved can usually sell seats as demand dictates, or as much as they wish. This setting usually happens in airlines with a very close partnership and can be especially present in airline alliances, whether that be Star Alliance, One World, Sky Team, or the other smaller ones. Now, why do airlines code share? Airlines in the industry have many ways to grow by, say, expanding their current network, upgaging aircraft into bigger ones, or forging partnerships with another airline, which primarily develops into a code share. Code share agreements often include flight sharing, sharing of frequent flyer programs, and luggage transfer, which, as you probably can recognize, does benefit many different parties. Now, an example of a code share. The United States is a very large market, one of the most important in the world, and often airlines cannot serve all of them. So foreign airlines enter into a code share partnership with a US airline to access smaller US cities. An example of this is Lufthansa, who code shares with United Airlines on its flights from Europe to the US, and then connects flights from United Airlines hubs into smaller cities, enabling Lufthansa to market those smaller US cities than otherwise they wouldn't have been able to serve with their larger aircraft. In reverse, United Airlines code shares with Lufthansa on inter-European flights, benefiting United Airlines in accessing smaller cities that are too small to be served by the airline, or cities that are of course too far from Newark to be served with say an aircraft like their 757s. Most recently we saw Air New Zealand launch a flight into New York, and with thanks to partnerships with other airlines and connectivity with United Airlines as part of the Star Alliance, brand new connection opportunities are now now available, whether again they're traveling in the United States or traveling on the opposite direction through to other cities in New Zealand. Another example though might be accessing secondary cities in foreign countries, wherein the market is too small for the airline to serve. An example is Malaysia, where most foreign carriers fly to Kuala Lumpur and therefore code share with Malaysia Airlines for secondary cities in Malaysia. Greece also comes to mind. Foreign airlines usually only serve Athens with connections to other Greek cities on board some of the carriers from there. Code share partnerships, though, don't just limit themselves to the aviation industry. It also applies to air rail journeys, like Lufthansa code sharing with rail services from Frankfurt Airport. In rare cases, code share partnerships between airlines are upgraded into a joint venture business agreement, like the JV partnership between Delta Airlines and Air France KLM, wherein, in addition to the code share, the three airlines coordinate pricing, flight schedule, share revenue, and much more. In other cases, an interline is done between airlines. This is a code share minus the display of each other airline's code, coupled with luggage transfer, but most don't include sharing of frequent flyer programs, so maybe a little bit of a more watered-down agreement. 
What are the advantages of a co-chairing though? Well, well, they do have many, such as virtually expanding an airline's reach into new markets, or markets that may be too small for the airline. It also reduces costs for an airline. Co-chairing with other carriers is cheaper than flying its own aircraft to a faraway destination, which in most cases happens with European airlines to Australia and Asian airlines towards North and South America. But the thing is, code sharing does also present some disadvantages, with the most common disadvantage of having to stop en route while flying, as airlines cut destinations and rely on connecting flights with a partner airline. It can make your journey a little bit more messy. It also can reduce competition on some routes, especially in the case of hub-to-hub -hub flying say with British Airways and American Airlines, between London Heathrow and Charlotte, Chicago, Dallas, Fort Worth, Miami, and others. Code shares between a full service and low service carrier also present a disadvantage as passengers usually are hoping for the same standard of a full service carrier from the low service one. As we mentioned at the beginning, therein lies a bit of confusion when you could be going on a low cost airline despite paying a premium. The aviation industry is always finding ways to expand, with code share agreements being one of them. Easily implemented, it costs less than sending one plane and often will give travellers more choice. As someone living in Australia, I can wholeheartedly say that code shares have saved me on many occasions. So the next time you're flying, keep a sharp eye out on code sharing flights as they're very, very interesting. Thank you very much for watching this video here on Globetrotting. We do hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any thoughts on the code sharing system or anything you'd just generally like to add, you can do so in the comments below. Subscribe if you are new and stay tuned for more content here on Globetrotting.